So this is a quick tutorial on how to find out whether your computer is using uh, a spindle disk, old style, or a new SSD, sorry, new SSD. Uh, it can be using C++ to do this programmatically and using WMI. If you're not familiar with that, that's a Windows Management Instrumentation, uh, and it provides a kind of proxy to you look at um, some, some computer's hardware at uh, quite a low level and interlace you from some of the very old and gnarly Win32 stuff. So let's get started. I'm going to write a new, uh, get a new C++ project. I'm going to use Windows Desktop Wizard, and we're going to call it WMI Tests 4. Call it whatever you want. Uh, I don't want pre-compiled headers, and I don't need the SDL checks. I can make it as simple as possible. So let's just wait for that to cook. Sorry, being attacked by mosquitoes. Okay, so let's kill the clutter. Make it as simple as possible. Save that. And um, I think my project won't build out of the box. And this is because I've installed the uh, driver development kit. Windows driver development kit and Windows software development kit store them both in the same box is kind of asking for trouble. I don't know why the two teams don't play very nicely with each other, but if you store one, uh, one seems to overwrite the default settings on your machine for the other. So let me just go and fix that in the linker settings of the project. You probably won't have to do this, but um, uh, if you are getting this code from me, you may need to go in and changes. So additional library directories. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste from another application, actually. I've got on another screen that you can't see. Um, and let's just put that in there so it knows where to find the library. There we go. Lovely. Save that. Uh, you'll notice that's x64, so I need to be compiling in 64-bit as well for it to make use of the right library. And let's just build that, make sure that it goes. Cool, okay. So um, next thing we're gonna do is just start off uh, with some of the um, WMI basics. Uh, we're gonna need a couple of things to start off with. Um, and we're gonna need uh, a locator and a service. So the service, for the WMI is actually going to allow us to interface with the WMI system itself. Uh, the locator is going to give us that service. So by pulling those in, uh, I need to make a couple of references. First of all, I'm going to need in this project windows.h pretty much for everything Windows. Uh, I'm going to need the web-based enterprise management library. And I'm also going to need uh, some COM stuff as well to pull in. We need COM to, uh, to actually be able to interface with the WMI because we'll be making a COM call to get that for us. So I've got those two guys. Uh, the next thing I need to do then is actually go ahead and initialize the COM runtime since that's what I'll be using. Um, let me... Um, let me create a function for that, actually. And I'll tell you what, I'm just going to copy and paste some code in uh, that I've done before. Otherwise, this will be an extremely long tutorial. Um, so if you're using Common C++, this probably looks fairly, uh, fairly normal. Um, I'm initializing COM here because I need to make a COM call later in the program. Um, and I am also um, uh, initializing default security level here. Um, for the WMA stuff, when I make other comp calls, uh, I'll need to set some special security on that. Um, just because WMI can be uh, calling into perhaps even another computer and often you need to have a specific account for that. Um, and let me just get rid of that little red underline. Let me use the name space. That's okay. Oh no, that's uh, just a little bit of error checking here just to um, see if it blows up on us. Um, so let me make a call to that then to make sure that that gets run. Uh, 
uh, so that will initialize our basic com. And then the um, the next thing we need to do then is actually um, make sure that we can actually get the service that we can use then to call into the WMI to actually get the details of the um, um, the actual underlying hardware that we're interested in. So um, I've also written another function for this, which I'm just going to copy and paste in, and we'll just walk through it quickly. Uh, so let me copy across from another screen. I put this in here, and I'll just walk through it very quickly. Uh, so with this, we're passing in um, locator, uh, which was the thing that will give us the service. With the service is the thing that we actually want to actually call through to the WMI with. Uh, that would be our kind of um, proxy, so to speak. Um, so old style C++ programming. Um, um, we're passing in the things we want and inside the actual execution block will, uh, because they're both uh, pointers, um, those will be set and then we can use them from the calling method. So running through this, um, this is another com instance uh, we're setting this up to in process because we're going to be running, uh, just running inside this single process here. We're not calling into a comm server. Uh, basic error checking. Uh, this is important. The comm server that we're connecting to, we need to use this namespace. So uh, for all this WMI stuff, uh, it's organized into uh, namespaces so that you can find the various categories of things that you're interested in. Um, and this one, uh, Microsoft Windows Storage, is all to do with disks and uh, so on and so forth, removable disks and the kind of storage you can imagine. Um, that's the basic call for that. A uh, bit of error checking. Uh, we need to set the security again uh, because um, this isn't necessarily going to be called uh, on the management service on the machine that we're on at the moment, we could possibly call through to a machine, another machine on a network, for example. We may want a completely different set of uh, network credentials for that. Um, but here we're just going to use the local machine. So this is the default, um, some basic error checking. And we need to call that again. So um, if we call that method from the execution, passing in the locator and the services. And that should, let's run through that, just check where we are, make sure that nothing breaks down. So far so good, errors, uh, do we want to run that? No, okay, so we've got some unresolved externals, uh, looks like we may be missing um, some of the libraries here. Um, okay, so we also need to be using statically linked to this library as well for the web-based enterprise management WMI. Uh, let's build that again. Okay, a couple of basic warnings. We can ignore that for the second. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's just step through it, make sure it doesn't blow up. Let's just step through. Just make sure it doesn't throw any errors and that uh, we've got addresses for these. Yeah, so um, we've got a reference for that, which is good. If it was all zeros, we would know that there was something wrong. The locator we're not too interested in, it's just the services we'll be using. Okay, so fine. And I guess we don't need Hello World anymore. Right, so next step, now that we've got our services, um, we can look at actually calling through actually getting some useful information from those services. So um, the next thing we want to do is we want to be running a query against WMI. Um, so let me pop some more code in. Um, the first line here is uh, the thing that we'll be using to enumerate through the devices that we will be getting from this query, select star from MSFT physical disk. So this is the storage um, class um, from. And so here we go. This is, uh, if we look on the uh, Microsoft Docs for uh, WMI storage management API, we can see MSFT physical disk class. Uh, if we get one of these physical disks, 
uh, objects from WMI, these are the properties which it will expose. And uh, one of the things that we're quite interested in is uh, spindle speed. Uh, basically, if it's an SSD, the spindle speed will be zero. Um, and the other one that we're interested in is the uh, media type. So let's just have a look at the other one, media type, search for that. Um, and we can see if it has a media type of four, it's an SSD. So assuming that both of those things match up, uh, fairly high probability that it's an SSD. Uh, we can also check see whether it's an HDD as well. So fine. Um, so WMI is very useful. We can pass a query in a fairly human, user lang human usable language. Uh, in this case, we want to select start from this particular management object, MSFT physical disk. Um, and we want to enumerate through all of that. And the enumerator that we will be using is this object that I've set up here. Um, the next step we want to do then is to um, just check that it works because um, don't need that. Bit of basic error checking. Uh, if it blows up, release our memory. Uh, and uh, we always want to do com uninitialization, even though this is a bit of a baby program and it's not really doing a lot. Uh, then the next piece of the program is going to create an object that we actually want uh, to uh, our enumerator to yield to. So in this case, uh, we create a, a storage enumerator. So we're creating something to hold our list of objects that we get returned from this uh, query that we've run against WMI. Um, we go through it and we pull out one of the particular objects using the next method on the enumerator. So the next will populate this storage web-based enterprise management object. Uh, it will also give us an error code as well so that we can see whether it's broken or not or whether the enumeration is finished. So we'll plow through this. Uh, we're expecting to get this storage object populated. And let, let's just comment this line out for now. Um, when we call a get with a particular um, property name on the object, um, we will find that it's um, it's a variant property. I guess you know the um, WMI doesn't the runtime doesn't know what type it is, so we have to pull it back out of a variant. And so for a lot of these, um, we need to do. Uh, we need to cast it back into the correct type. And what I've gone and done is to actually to create an object that we can put this into, like a concrete object with some types. Um, so I'm going to create a new object just that we can use for storage. And uh, let me create a new class. And I'm going to call this one storage device. And let's just save that. And in there, um, I just want a few uh, properties. And these are going to be the ones I want. Um, I need to also just plop in a couple of declarations at the top so that I can use string. And the reason that I want these is because if we look back at the MSFT physical disk class, so the device name, oh, sorry, device ID is a string. Um, the rest of them are integers. So if we look at bus type, for example, um, bus type UN16. Okay, we don't need to uh, be that stingy with our uh, storage allocation. So a regular int is fine. The other three, health status, spindle speed, and media type are all in 16s or in 32s. So uh, those are the reasons behind the type. So what we're looking to do when we um, plow through this in our main loop is actually to um, to cast these in and um, from variants back into our 
typed object, and then we can actually make use of that afterwards somewhere else in another part of the program. Um, and let me just pull this in as well, so um, we can use it in the rest of the program. Bear with, and we've got it storage device dot h and uh, it's local so thank you Microsoft there we go and we should now have that and um, come on down I'm not quite sure that's done oh sorry <laughs> Wrong language. I'm still in C sharp. Uh, that's why the uh, red squiggly runs uh, include not using uh, <laughs> the um, failure of programming with too many languages, unfortunately. Um, so if we go back down here, let me just uncomment this where I created one of these storage devices. So I'm then going to set the properties for each of these, uh, pull it through. So I'm going to take the unsigned integer value. Uh, unsigned integer value seems to be fairly healthy from casting for a lot of these variants. You'll find that uh, sometimes if you're uh, doing this WMI stuff, like uh, a lot of these uh, will, uh, a lot of the values will be filled out, but um, as you know, if you do a lot of C++, you can get a lot of garbage if you uh, if you choose the wrong things or unanalyzed variables, and that's definitely so with um, this WMI stuff. So, uh, and it's especially so with these variants because a lot of the properties haven't been filled. Uh, storage devices. So let me just do and one more thing actually. Um, I will create up here. Um, let me do a vector of. Um, storage devices so that we can actually um, save them as we go through our loop storage devices and it doesn't know what a vector is so let me just pull that in as well and uh, include this time not using include and we want a vector lovely And we should then have our vector storage devices. Lovely. And we can push back then. So whenever we create a new storage device, we will just add it to the list. And uh, we're going to release that guy at the end because we're going to go back through and it's going to create a new one. Right, so let's run this and actually see if we've got some data out of it. And uh, let me just set a breakpoint at the top here. Uh, check we can build, shift control P. Lovely, a couple of warnings. Uh, I'm not going to worry about those for now. Fine, start off the program. Uh, here we go. So let's just run that. Make sure that we've got something back. Yeah, what's the return? It's one. So these will be the um, the populated objects that we've got. So device ID is zero. Actually, I'm running on um, SCSI disk at the moment. So this is actually the LUN number. Uh, bus type is 17. So let's just check what 17 means in the um, in the documentation for the object. Uh, bus type, if I just look that up, no Google Chrome, I'm quite used to, there we go, bus type 17 is NVMe, well, <laughs> I'm actually not sure what that was, <laughs> I might have to double check that one, okay, so, um, L status zero, spindle speed. So these are the two we're interested, basically the media type and the spindle speed. Spindle speed is zero. That's what we were hoping for, SSD. So uh, spindle speed should be zero. Uh, I'm hoping my, heart, my uh, SSD is not spinning around. Media type is four. So um, let's just check what four is then for media type. And uh, let me grab the media type, copy and paste this time. Media type of four is SSD. So Pretty sure media type four and zero is spindle speed. 
that will give so that will give us the um, the information that we require to determine whether this is a machine running with an SSD or an old spindle hard disk drive. And I've just plumped this into my storage device. Let's have a quick look. So it looks a bit more sensible when it's in an object. Uh, probably when I get this uh, data back and do something with it, I will do some lookups or I'll store it in a database or convert it to JSON and send it off to a server or something. And then I will keep these lookups that um, are available in the documentation. Uh, I'll probably stick those in a database table somewhere or possibly in code if I wanted. I could um, I could turn those into text strings if I wanted to present them to a user in a slightly more meaningful fashion, uh, fashion than uh, 0345. Cool. Good luck. Happy coding. I uh, hope this was useful. And uh, cheers.